Reading is always good for the brain. It'll help you think bigger and stronger, you'll see. Hey everyone, I'm Rhys and welcome to my home reviews. Does anyone else still remember Underdog? Created in the 1960s by William Biggers, Underdog was a show about an anthropomorphic superhero dog who saves the world from whoever wants to destroy it or take it. This show is kind of like a parody of Superman if you really think about it, but it is fun to watch. The animation is good for its time because it was made in the 60s, the characters are simple but likeable, and the theme song which is catchy as hell and the most popular part of the show. Makes sense to make a movie about him, right? If it wasn't done by Disney. Released in 2007, this little adaptation of the classic cartoon hero was a disappointment, with people saying much of the storyline making no sense and little connections to the cartoon itself and also being produced by Walt Disney Productions. Not to say that Disney can't adapt any other cartoons not made by them, they just don't do it right. Well, except for George of the Jungle, that was good. And the sad thing is, they tried to take in what really would have been an awesome idea, and they turned it into a typical Disney live action pile of garbage. But we're gonna look it over today to see how they messed it up badly. Let's see what adventures of a superhero puppy waits for us. This is the Underdog Movie. The movie opens up with a narration by Underdog while showing clips from the cartoon, because they always go so well together in adaptations. This is Simon Bar Sinister, the wickedest man in the world. Wait, 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 wait a second. Jason Lee is playing Underdog in this movie? Oh, that's just perfect. First Alan Schumacher, and now this. Stop putting talented actors in these terrible movies! As the opening credits roll, we get a pretty good rendition of the show's theme song. But the film quickly goes down here from there, as we see our main hero working at the police force. Movie, have you forgotten that Underdog works as a shoe shiner, and his name was Shoe Shine Boy as his undercover name? You've already got one thing wrong in the first minute! Well, anyway, it turns out he's not very good at sniffing bombs and gets embarrassed by the police and their dogs. <laughs> nice work, rookie. Hey look, the dogs can talk to each other in this movie. Gee, haven't seen that before! So Shushan leaves the police force, but suddenly gets kidnapped by Cad, played by Patrick Warburton, who has taken him to Simon Barcelos' lab, played by Peter Dinklage, who wants to test out some scientific experiments on a dog. Which is his plan, and it makes no sense. Don't worry, little guy. It will only hurt... a lot. You know, we're only a few minutes in and I'm wondering, when does Underdog get his ring, which gives him his superpowers? He doesn't have the ring in this movie? Then how the hell does he get his superpowers then? Oh, he gets chemicals spilled on him. I thought we were going with the Superman parody here, not the Flash. Get your origins right, movie! So Shu escapes using his newly superpowers and runs into a dog of bullies, one of them named Riff Raff, who is a dog now, not a wolf. Look, I don't want any trouble, okay? Now that today is your lucky day, mutt. I grip you to pieces, but I don't want to get my paws dirty. You know what? Let's play a game. Let's keep counting all the things that this movie has got to roll with its source material. So right now, we only have three things that are false in this movie. Okay, moving on. After Shu gets away from, not Riff Raff, he runs into James Belushi who decides to take him home. There he has a son named Jack, played by Alex Neubrugger, who is not pleased with the dog's arrival. Yeah, take your mind off a few things, that's all. Listen, I'm telling you I am fine, alright? Okay. You don't have to keep doing this, you've got plenty of other things to worry about. I think that kid won't be starring anything else after this movie ends, right? Hey, look at that. I think we should call him... Shushan. You know, there was a purpose of why he was called Shushine Boy, right? Okay, alright. It's going in the list. 
Later that day, it looks like Shu's DNA has fully become compatible with the chemicals that spilled earlier as he starts making havoc around the house using his new powers. But just then, Jack comes back home and sees the mess he has done. What did you do? Give me a break, it was an accident. Did you just talk? Huh? What? Hmm? Whoa, 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 wait a minute. You can understand me? You know, Detective Pikachu handled that whole you can understand me thing way better than you can. Oh my god! You can understand me! Stop! I've been so lonely! So they both decide to train on the dog's newly discovered powers in the park, where they made Molly, played by Cindy Lou himself, Taylor Monsum, and Sweet Polly Purebred, voiced by Amy Adams. Look, you're a cute beagle and all, but I want a little pizzazz in a relationship. A guy who can sweep me off my feet. Oh yeah, I almost forgot she's not a news reporter in this movie. That's another one for the list! Afterwards, Shu hears that Polly and Molly are being mugged, so he decides to take action and rush to the rescue, which results in him crashing into things. I am a hero who never fails. I cannot be bothered by such de- Oh, ah, ooh, ooh, ah, ooh, oh that glass is really gonna leave a mark on my doggy skin. Oh, I should have more, more practice. Shu stops the thieves from Polly and Molly, but luckily disappearing without anyone seeing his real identity. Elsewhere, Simon and Cat have gone on the ground beneath the city to start their new lair and to continue with their evil project. I still stand by by my statement. His plan still makes no sense. I know, right? Later that night, Shu sees the news on TV about Cat robbing a shop and he quickly rushes to the rescue. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, I'm good. And I hope I don't look too ridiculous. Actually, that was an honest line Jason Lee said when he signed on to this film. There's no need to fear, Fish Dog is here! Okay, this film just keeps getting ridiculous every time, isn't it? After Underdog saves the store while Cat flees, he goes back home as he decides to wear his iconic red and blue costume, as we now have a montage of all the heroic things Underdog has done for the city. Now that dude knows how to chase a car. That should be me on the front page. I need a sample of his DNA. How do you look in a dress? Hmm. Somebody please help me! <laughs> okay, it is kind of funny seeing Patrick Warburton in a dress. Of course, Underdog sees him and rescues the poor old lady, but before realizing it was Cat, as he tries to get rid of him, leading to some slapstick humor. Dispose of you right now. Well, uh, I got this. It turns out he's got Underdog's collar, revealing his true name and address, which leads to Simon kidnapping Jack's dad and taking him to his lair. Well, you better call the police, Jack, because this is some serious stuff going. Or you could just fly. Yeah, that, that, that's a real good option there too. As soon as they arrive, Jack gets grabbed by Cat, leaving Underdog with Simon Bar Sinister. Okay, here we go. We might get a bit of an action battle scene here between Underdog and his arch rival, Simon Bar Sinister. This should be. I I'm sorry. Look, do whatever you want to me. Just let them go. Are you kidding me? You gave yourself up without a fight? This is our hero? He's pathetic! He would never give himself up in the cartoon unless his powers were growing weak! But here, he just bloody takes himself in without doing anything about it! You know, there's a saying to describe your actions here, Underdog. Um... It's shit. So Shu Shine loses his superpowers as Simon Bastion gives it to his dogs and goes up to City Hall to take the mayor hostage. He tells Cat to attach a bomb to the top of the roof while Molly and Polly follow him. The reason we're down here is me. All I had to do was just tell you Shu Shine was underdog. I'll tell you what you should have told me. That you gave my JV baseball sweater away to a superhero. And how is that a big of a deal? 
So they escape and flee off to City Hall where Underdog tries to stop Simon by Sinister, but ended up falling to the ground while Simon blindly sees the pills falling out of his pocket and Underdog eating one of them. How did you? You know, for an evil scientist, you're an idiot. Okay, after a bit of a boring dog chase, I suppose, we do get a bit of a fun action scene between Underdog and Simon Bar Sinister. But, uh-oh, what's happening on the roof? Help! Help! No, 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 lady. The proper reaction to being strapped by a bomb is... We're going to die! <laughs> but then Jack's father gives Simon the antidote, making him powerless, and Underdog saving Molly and Polly. But he has to get rid of the bomb before it explodes. Okay, how far does it go? He should be near the center of the earth by now. Well, if he's actually dead, I might as well give him a proper funeral, and I'll read out this speech that I wrote. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to commemorate the death of a brave little dog who saved our lives. Underdog, who risked his life defending our city from Simon Bar Sinister. He is now laying lifeless after burying a bomb beneath the earth. Even though he's gone, he will still be regarded as a legend, like with men most heroes we named, such as Superman, Iron Man, Egon Spangler, Doc Dodgers, and the most legendary person to be ever put on this planet, David Bowie. So now we say goodbye, old pup, and we will miss you, underdog. May God rest your soul. Alright, who's up for a barbie? And just as cliche as you expected, yes, he's actually alive, as everyone is happy that a talking dog has saved their city. But what happened to Simon by Sinister? Well, he ended up in jail, of course. Meet your new roommate. Hey. You can't do this to me. Yes, I no. can. I just no. did. No! No! Oh, come on. I would be happy if I had to share a room with Patrick Warburton. He would probably give me teaching lessons about voice acting. Thus, we end our film with Underdog doing what he does best, saying his catchphrase. Not bird, nor plane, nor even frog. It's just little old me, Underdog. So that's the end of the Underdog movie. So, let's see how many things that this movie has gotten wrong. Eleven! What an unlucky number for an unlucky movie. So yeah, Underdog the movie was an attempt trying to bring our favourite little dog to the big screen, but failed miserably with its poor writing, little story connections, or anything to do with its original source material. This film really didn't catch our hearts on why we love the original cartoon to begin with. The only good thing about this movie is its cast. Even though they're trying their best, I can't say their delivery is not the worst. I say if any other studio is going to make a new underdog movie, I strongly suggest they look at the cartoons to understand why people love it and add newer things to a new modern audience. But here we have a film of a dog who just couldn't land on the ground right. So in total, this film gets a 3 out of 10 and a not so recommendation. Thank you for watching today's review, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all next time.